Hi, I'm Keith Gaines from Stoats Equipment. I'm with the technical support group here today in the Nephi, Utah store. Uh, today we are working on an 8R310 tractor. So today we're gonna walk around this tractor. We're gonna look at some of the safety, convenience, maintenance, and operational features of the tractor. Prior to operation of this tractor, read your operator's manual. And then with any questions, refer to it. You can also call your local Stoats Equipment dealer with any questions. A few of the things we wanna cover real quick. This is your fuel fill. Diesel only, green cap, diesel only. Down below it is our DEF, blue cap, and DEF only. All right, here's our oil fill on this tractor. It's right here on the side of the tractor on the left side. We'll unscrew it out, the dipstick is attached. We can check the oil, make sure it's full. If it's low, we can add the oil back to it. It would be best if we use John Deere oil, the same oil that's in it. All right, this tractor's got an ILS front suspension on it, and it's got a ton of grease points that you need to grease. Every pivot point on this front axle pretty much has a grease point. You'll notice them here, here, they're here, and they're on, they're on also the drive lines. There's several underneath here that you can't see. They're on the bottom side, and they're on the drive shafts on both sides, and they all have grease points. So it's very important to grease them as required. We're in the rear of the tractor and we're gonna cover some of the grease points back here. We have one on each side right here. We have them on the cylinders. We have them on the draft links. We have them on this center link right here. Uh, just a few on the rear compared to the front, but we have a few. Up above, you can notice that the windshield washer fluid is right there. It's got a blue cap on it. If you open up the rear window, you can pour the fluid in there easily, or you could climb up the back of the tractor. All your fluids and filters can be bought at your local Stoats Equipment store or online from Stoats Equipment. If you're working by yourself on this tractor and you need to hook up an implement, you can use the rear hitch controls, raise and lower the hitch, and you can spin the PTO slightly so that you can attach a drive shaft to it. We're over on the right side of the tractor. We got both of our fuel filters. We have our fuel bowl with our water separator here and then we have our oil filter right next to it. I'm here on the left side of the tractor. In front of our rear tires, underneath the tractor is our hydraulic filter. All right, we're gonna open the hood now. Here's the hood latch. You just pull it to the side, put a little bit of effort, and you can lift the hood up. All right, we're gonna cover some of our uh, cooling package features right now and how to clean them. Um, we've already unlatched the other side, so I'm gonna go ahead and unlatch both these, and we can pivot these out. There's a little handle here. We can pivot them out and you can use light air pressure to blow through here and get any debris out of the way. All right, we've got our top one just kind of latched out of the way. With that one, we can pull this lower one out of the way. We could walk to the other side and pull it free, but for this, all you have to do is just blow it out, clean out any debris and make sure it's clean. So on the left side of the tractor, right in front of the steps, we have our batteries. You can see them inside there. Right above the batteries is our battery disconnect. You can flip it on or off to shut off the battery. All right, on the back side of the left side of the tractor, underneath the hood is our air filter. It's got some quick plastic clips. We can pull it out and we have access to our primary filter. A Little bit of effort here and we can pull this out. We have behind it a secondary filter. You should never ever clean this secondary filter. The primary filter you can blow out with light air pressure, probably under three PSI, and I wouldn't suggest doing it very often, maybe less than three times before you replace the filter. All right, on the back side of the tractor underneath the hood is our coolant reservoir. One thing to do is if the tractor's hot, never pull this off. Uh, when it's cooled down, you'll wanna check and see if you need to add coolant, just unscrew the cap from it. Add your coolant in here. Put your lid back on and make sure it's tight. Right up outside the driver's door is the cabin air filter. If you just click the knob half a turn, you can pull it down and you can replace the cabin air filter. You probably don't need to do it until it's ready to be replaced. All right, we've shown you the batteries. If you ever have to jump this tractor to get it started, right here on the starter, there's a main battery post. You can pull off this red connector and you can hook your positive cable right here and you can hook your negative cable 
to this point right here or to any good ground and jump the tractor. And on this engine right here, we have a block heater that's right here accessible to your house power outlet. So we removed the side panel here just so we could show you the belt. Um, the belt is something you'll want to check regularly. Just take a quick visual inspection of it. If you see any damage or any imperfections of it, replace it and probably check the idlers while you're doing it. Okay, one thing we wanna talk about real quick is, is wheel torque. Uh, there are so many different rims and tires uh, that go on these tractors uh, and combinations of them. Um, one of the things we do wanna mention is check your operator's manual for proper wheel torque. If you have any questions about that, please call Stoats Equipment. Um, but one thing you'll wanna do is every 50 hours, recheck the torque, bolt stretch, paint wear, just retorque the bolts after 50 hours. And then if you have any questions about that, check your operator's manual and it will give you more options on retorquing the bolts. We're gonna go ahead and close the hood now just to show you how to do it. Make sure it closes correctly. It's latched completely. Check real quick, it will not open. So it's closed correctly. All right, so when you're getting in, you might wanna use three points of contact so you don't fall off. Get your door open and climb in just as safely as possible. In the cab, the operator's manual is right down here next to the seat. And as you can see, it's an awful big book. So when you read it, take a little bit of your time so you can reference it later. The operator's manual is offered in English, Spanish, and multiple other languages. All right, now we're sitting down in the cab. Um, you'll notice that we have a seat that'll swivel. You can look out the back. You can look out at both sides of it. And we also have a jumper seat. If you have a passenger, they've got a jumper seat, they've got a seat belt, and you as a driver have the seat belt as well. So on the rear of the tractor, we have a sunshade. You can pull down, you can keep the sun out. And there's also one in the front, the same thing. Down here, we push the lever with our foot and we can lower the steering wheel into position. And on this side of the steering wheel, we can pull the lever and we can adjust it telescopically to the position we want and then lock it in place. We're gonna go ahead and power the key on. We're gonna turn the key to the on position and we're gonna let the systems kind of power up. The displays and the monitors get to where they need to be. All right, once we've got our key powered on, we can adjust the seat down. We can adjust it up to the position that's comfortable for us. We can move the seat forward and back and we can move the backrest back and forward. Uh, multiple adjustments on this seat, depending on the cab that you have. Okay, once you get your seat adjusted, if you haven't already got your seat belt on, make sure you put your seat belt back on and make sure it's latched in place. And whenever you're driving the tractor, you always wanna have your seat belt on. All right, we've got our key powered on, seat adjusted, uh, our monitor's on. And one of the first things we have to do is we'll get a error message that comes up about the guidance display being on. And we just want to accept this and then that allows us to use the virtual display as it's in place. All right, we've got our display on. We're gonna go ahead and hit the menu button before we start and run the tractor. We're gonna go into the systems. We're gonna go into our diagnostic center and that brings up a list of things in our diagnostics. We're gonna go to trouble codes. And right now this tractor has no trouble codes. The one thing you'll wanna look for is if anything's active or inactive. If you have active codes, um, you can clear them by hitting clear codes. You'll wanna clear them, okay and then you'll wanna see if they come up as inactive. If they stay active in the system, that's when you might wanna co contact your local Stoats Equipment dealer. Before we start the tractor, we're gonna go ahead and check the menu button. We're gonna go in and we're going to select engine and we're gonna make sure our exhaust auto filter cleaning is set to the auto position. We want it on. Couple of features on the steering column. We have our horn here on the steering column on the side of the, the lever. We have our flashers and we have our wipers. We have our front wiper for the front windshield. And we also have one for the side that will also turn it on. They both have wash functions for both windows, front and right side. Okay, for the lights, we can hit our menu button and we can hit lights here on the display. And we also have a quick function button down here we can hit that'll take us to the same position to turn on all the work lights outside the tractor. Once we've selected the lights that we wanna use, we have our buttons down here to enable them. We can turn on all the lights outside the tractor for the work lights and just specific lights. Okay, we have our convenience features right here. We have our, our speaker volume, our radio volume, 
our Bluetooth and phone volume. We have our temperature settings for our HVAC and we have our fan speed settings right here along with the light buttons, a beacon, and then we have our hazard lights. On our command arm, we have a bunch of other functions that we can use. We have, we have our hitch and we have all of our SCBs across the front and we have our PTO. These are all operated with your hand from the command arm and these are more advanced features. If you have any problems with any of this, please refer to your operator's manual or contact your local Stutz equipment dealer. So both mirrors on this tractor can be adjusted with this little panel right here. You can switch from left to right and then you can move all the functions up, down, left to right to adjust so you can have clear visibility behind you. We're gonna go over the pedals real quick. We have a clutch pedal, we have brakes, and there's a right and left brake, and we link them together. And we also have a throttle pedal. So we're gonna come out of park, we'll go slightly forward, and we'll scroll it up all the way to forward one, and we'll go all the way up to forward two. We'll pull it back. We, we're back into our neutral position, we come across, and we can pull it into reverse. Go back over here, we pull it into park. Before shifting this tractor into gear, make sure that all areas around it are clear, there's nobody around you, and make sure that the operation is in the right direction whenever you go forward or reverse. So we have a touchscreen radio here. We can uh, pick whatever function we want. You can preset your stations, you can adjust on and off, you can adjust your volume, and you can attach your phone to this. Okay, and we have some convenience features here. We have USB ports, and we have John Deere power ports right here on this side. Here's our 110 power outlet. And here's our 12 volt power outlet. We have a fridge right here. And in that fridge, you can put water, lunch, whatever you need while you're out using this tractor. Here's the inside of the fridge. You can adjust some temperature settings and there is an on off switch inside there. Okay, so up here in the front corner of the tractor, we got the corner post display. Uh, it'll show miles per hour, engine RPM. It'll show what gear we're in. And it also shows uh, our coolant temperature, our fuel level, and our def level up here. That display will also show any of the icons. They pop up if there's an error, it'll show uh, what function could be affected and it will show an error code here on the display. For video purposes, we move this forward all the way so that you guys can see this, but we're gonna go ahead and start the tractor up. And to do that, we'll just go to the crank position. Tractor is now started. And then we have functions over here on the display. We're showing voltage, we're showing the engine temperature, we're showing oil pressure. And if we're using power, it'll show it along this bar right here, which it's also a touch screen, so it changes as I touched it. So we've been using the tractor for a little bit. Um, the engine's warmed up. We're gonna go ahead and shut it down. We've let it come back to idle to allow the turbos to, to slow down. We're gonna go ahead and turn the key to the off position. And after that happens, we're gonna allow all of our displays to power down. All right, we've turned the tractor off. Um, we've allowed our, our display to power down. Um, allowing this to power down and allowing the tractor to shut off all the systems before we go turn off our battery disconnect switch. By shutting it off, it allows the controllers to power down as they are supposed to. Okay, we've powered down the inside of the cab. We've allowed the controllers to power down. We've allowed the DEF system to finish its purge, which has taken about a minute, maybe a little bit longer. Once that's all done, then we can come over here and we can shut off, shut off our battery disconnect and we're not gonna affect any of the systems in the tractor and it will power down as it's supposed to. So we have a quick reference guide on the side of our cooling package. It shows part numbers, it shows capacities, it shows grease points, it shows everything and more of what we've covered today. You can also ask your Stoats equipment dealer to print you this form, it's a maintenance guide, and it shows virtually the same thing that is showing on the side of the cooling package. Thanks again for watching this ADAR introductory video. Please read and reference your operator's manual and contact your local Stoats equipment dealer for sales and support. Be sure to check out any of our other videos with Stoats equipment and with the technical support group for Stoats equipment.